Hey, so in this video, I wanted to share with y'all um, how I, this brand new programmer who knows nothing of anything, um, I'm just about a, a month or so into this uh, programming venture, um, how I figured out to use JSON files effectively while programming in Unity. And uh, it was a major uphill battle, um, primarily because for some reason, the NuGet package that you would normally download for JSON, Newtonsoft.json, um, apparently that is compatible only with the most recent version of the .NET framework. And this is a problem when you're using Unity because Unity very specifically targets only 2.0 and 3.5, depending upon exactly what you're using. So that means you have a version mis mismatch. That's a problem, apparently. Um, I was able to get it to work for the immediate session after which I had installed that NuGet package. Um, but for some reason, every time I would reinitiate, you know, the next day or whatever it might be, then it would fail. So I wanted to lead you guys through the steps that I had gone through in order to make this work. So here is a newbie's approach to utilizing JSON files for Unity. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually go to the source. Forget the NuGet stuff, just go to the source and pick up the original DLL. And this will be done by going to newtonsoft.com slash JSON. Once there, you want to just download the actual file itself. So once you hit download, don't follow those instructions, but rather the very last one, it says direct download zip file containing json.net assemblies and source code. So that's what we're looking for is actually the zip file itself. This sent us over to GitHub and then we have that particular release, json 100 rzip It's about an 8 meg file, so it shouldn't take too long. And once we've got it, then we're going to look for the appropriate bin file. That's what we're most interested in inside it. So we've got two possibilities, a bin and a source. We don't care about the source code, but rather the bins. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, we've got .NET 2.0, .NET 3.5, .NET 4.0, and .NET 4.5. Now, if you remember, I was saying before that Unity uses a mixture of 2.0 and 3.5. Um, what I used personally was the highest, 3.5, and that has worked well for me. So go into the 3.5, and that is the DLL that you will want, newtonsoft.json.dll. And where you're going to put it is into your current project. So find out what, wherever your project itself is within Unity and navigate to that folder. Um, you could just open up Unity itself and then do basically a copy paste if you wanted to. So go ahead into the project here and grab it and just drop it in. Um, so that's where I have mine located. I've got it sitting in the assets folder. And the interesting thing is once it went into the assets folder, it actually went straight into my namespace. So you can see up here, newtonsoft.json. So it actually went automatically in there. I didn't have to do a thing in order to make that happen. Um, if for some reason yours doesn't show up after loading the DLL into your assets, then go ahead and type it in and it should be white like that. If it's gray, that means that it's a namespace that's not used and we don't that's of course going to cause problems in this case because if you declare it and it's not recognizing it then we have an issue nonetheless this is how we're going to get access to the newtonsoft.json and thus will enable us to be able to deserialize and that's the key that's the big thing that we want to be able to do here so 
that leads to the quite big question of how do we actually utilize this thing? Well, in all of my searching, um, what I found was that ideally we'll be using either um, arrays or dictionaries in order to deserialize the information that we have in that particular JSON file. And so I figured I would use a dictionary. The problem is these dictionaries are crazy in depth. Um, they're, what, from what I keep seeing is that people are building out the dictionary before any information is in there. They're building in like tons and tons of properties. And I have no idea what any of that means. It, it, it's just complex. And one day I'm going to have to learn it. And that's great. And then when that day comes, I will. But <laughs> in the meantime, um, what I discovered was that how complex it has to be is going to depend upon how complex your JSON is. As such, let's take a moment here. We're going to break away from the C sharp side of things. And I want to show you the JSON file that I ended up finally creating and using. And then we can extrapolate from there why we're doing what we're doing with C sharp. To that end, Here's a look at the actual JSON file itself. As you can see, I've built it out using numbers to identify the objects themselves. Um, these are team compositions. It's, this is for a, uh, a drafting mini game built around uh, Heroes of the Storm. So I have composition one. Composition one is paired with one giant object. So let's, let's look at this JSON file itself. Um, how do we write a JSON? So what you're seeing first off is we're going to have opening brackets on the beginning of the file and of course a closing bracket at the end of the file. Each individual entry into JSON here is going to have, it's, it's a key value pair is what I'm using it for. I'm, I'm, I'm not certain if there's any other way to utilize this guy, um, but this means that we've got our key here, and then we're gonna use this colon as a separation. And then whatever comes after that colon is going to be the value associated with that particular key. In this case, I'm building this out as an object. So the key is no, key number 39, and the value is an object. So that's important because our very first dictionary over here is going to be a giant one. It is going to be a dictionary int, and that int will declare exactly which composition number we're dealing with. And then this object is going to be a string string dictionary. And you'll find inside that object here is a string, right? Inside quotes, colon, and then its value is, in this case, yes. So an, another string, and, and that, that's why I did that. That should be a Boolean, of course, but all of the other ones are, in fact, strings, except for the against, which once I import that number 40, because this is comp 39 against comp number 40, I'm going to have to, of course, convert that string into an int in order for me to get into here and actually access the composition later on to declare that it was one team against another. So there is a little bit of working around that you do have to do in order to make things work appro fully appropriately. But we've got string string as a dictionary inside of an int dictionary. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, this allows for what I've found to be basically one of the simplest formats. Um, a lot of times the formats of these JSON files gets really really huge, really, really fast. And uh, I'm sure that's useful for many peoples, but for something so simple as I want information to be stored outside of my C-sharp script, um, this seemed to do the trick. So now that we know that, like I said, the biggest deal here is that you know how, how this information is set up within your JSON itself. So I highly recommend building the JSON and then analyzing each individual unit that you have. And that is going to determine exactly what kind of object you're going to need to import all of this into. I do want to make note, by the way, that you don't have to use a dictionary 
in order to import stuff from your JSON. Um, I've seen re a lot of references to arrays instead, and I'm pretty sure that all an array is is like taking that number and then within this object is would simply be a giant listing. Um, so rather than having one team, win, place, etc., cetera, um, I wouldn't be able to have any of that. And I would have to make sure that whatever is inside this is homogenous. So it would all be characters, for instance, Falstad, Zeratul, Dahaka, etc. And then I'd have to interpret that on the other side. Um, as you can see, for what I'm doing, it looks like a dictionary is probably the best choice. And, and that has actually paid off for me in this particular program. Um, but that might be worth looking into, either a list or an array. So that's looking at the JSON. Um, you're going to create, again, quick review. You've got your key value pair. Um, your key or your value could potentially be an object, either of them or both of them could be. And for an object, it's always going to be begin and end with your curly braces. Um, each individual key value pair is always going to end in a comma. And separating the key from the value is your colon. If it's a string, of course, you have quotes around it. If it's an integer, you just have it there as a number. You know, it, it works very, very similar to what you're already used to in C Sharp. So now that we've got the JSON taken care of, let's take a look at how to import this file, because this really is a completely separate file. This isn't just some other script. Um, so how do we import this completely separate file into our actual C Sharp script? All right, looking at C Sharp then, what we're going to do, I'm going to make this a little bigger. What we're going to do is, first off, we need to create two separate variables. So our first important variable is actually way up top here because I was working this differently previously. And that's going to be this guy, private string full JSON. So that's what I chose to call it. You can call it whatever you like. But this full JSON is going to be a text string. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is import this as text. Um, the second thing that we're going to want to do is create our dictionary. So I've decided to label this one, call this one all comps dict. And that is going to consist of a dictionary, which is int dict, right? So we have the integer, and then we're claiming this object to be a dictionary. And then that dictionary is going to get defined as string string, right? String string. And that is all comps dict. So all I'm doing here is creating it, it's instantiating it. I'm not actually claiming anything about it. We're not going to define any properties. We don't have to do that. That's not necess absolutely necessary, at least for something so simple. This is a very simple JSON file. So with that, we're going to go down here and we need to do two things. First off, let's see, let's go ahead and isolate the code that we're actually dealing with here. So we're going to deal with two lines. Here's our first one right here on line 344. And you can see that I've decided not to use JSON full, not quite sure why, but there's a different one in here that I had, which was JSON string. And here is the command. So JSON string, which is also a string here, equals resources dot load. And then in parentheses, we're going to put whatever it is that we're loading. So we're going to put our string in here. And this string is the location within the project. So as you go into this, particularly, this particular Unity project, the resources folder contains another folder that is called HOTS map stuff. And inside that folder, we have a forward slash. Inside that folder, then, is a file called generic comps.json. And that's this file right here. And then we're going to mark our, our comma type of parentheses text asset. See, marking it here as this text asset, the resources.load, that could load anything. That could load a picture, some, some JPEG. It, it could load tons of stuff. So we're just defining it as this is a text asset. 
The reason why we have to do that is because otherwise appending to string on the backside won't work. So mark your location that you're getting the file from, type of text asset, close off your parentheses, dot to string. And don't forget your, your parentheses there for the to string method. Once we close that off, this is going to load whatever text is here in your resources slash hotsmap stuff slash generic comps in this case. It's going to load all of the text from that file as a text asset into JSON string. And then now that we've find we've got the the basic data sitting here in our inside our script finally, then we're going to go ahead and do this. And that is deserialize. So this is the way that we're going to populate our dictionary from that string. And this is the magical reason why we need newtonsoft.json to begin with. So the commands are json convert dot deserialize object. And then we have to define the structure to which we are going to deserialize it. So that's when we're putting the the entire bit in there. And as you can see, we're doing this to all comps dict. And that just so happens to be the other dictionary that we created, right? So all comps dict is dictionary int dict, dictionary string string. So that is all comps dict. And down here, we're going to populate that from deserialize object dictionary int dictionary string string. And in order to do this deserialization of this particular object, we're using the JSON string. So hopefully this makes sense. We're inputting the string, we're going to deserialize that, and it's going to create a dictionary that is int dict string string. And that we already instantiated as a separate object called all comps dict. So that right there is all that you really need in order to bring in whatever information you have on your JSON into C sharp. Congratulations. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Um, this will work for any JSON, um, for this particular game that I've been working on. I've got about 10 of them and I'm building them all very particularly. I'm building them in this fashion so that I can use exactly that same line, just copy paste, change the name of this and off we go, you know? Um, I can, one thing that you can do as well, just so you know, as you're looking at this resources.load, um, this is for me to get a generic composition, but I have one just up ahead here. Um, if you'll look at uh, this for very specific maps, um, what I did was hot map stuff slash, and then closed off the string and it said plus map. And that allows me to use my variable which is whichever map that is, and that will actually load a completely different file then, depending upon which map it is, because this entire thing before that comma is the string that declares the location of that particular file. And that, that means, of course, you need to name those files very particularly, but you can do that. So I have this very generic resources.load here that I can use, even though I'm going to be using it for 10 different maps here. So kind of cool. Um, let's see here. What else do we have that I wanted to share with you all about this? Um, ah, in order to make this data more accessible, how do we access this stuff? So if you look down just a little bit below here, now that we have the information, I've got all comps dict that the reason why I named it that was because it has all compositions. So it has actually within that dictionary, it's got all 40 of these entries. And then it has 39, 1, 40, 1, 38, 1. So it has all of this info. And I don't want all of that info available to me. I want the specialized info, just the one composition that I care about. So what I did, as you can see, it's highlighted here, all comps dict massively. So what I did is I created another dictionary, which was nothing but string string. And that string string dictionary is called enemy comp. And then we can use this command add. So I, when I created enemy comp, I actually created it and left it empty. The, I, I did the, the command actually 
which was enemy comp dot clear. And what this does is deletes all information. So it leaves you back with nothing more than the original. And the original is a dictionary string string. So that's what I did initially. And I haven't done anything with this dictionary since doing that. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding in for the very first time this particular key, which is one and then team, and then when, so on and so forth. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a key, one, comma, and then a value. And I'm declaring that the value of this key is equal to all comps dict jtmid one. So this jtmid is an integer that I randomly came across. I created um, using total comps. So I figured out that I had 40 comps. Um, because random, for some reason, it goes in the minimum integer and maximum integer, but it does not include the max for some reason. So I went ahead and said total comps plus one. That means it's out of 41. Give me a random number between one and 41. And that is JTMID. So that's an integer. Otherwise known as right there, dictionary int. So that's JTMID is this particular number. And then inside that number, every single entry has a one key. So I'm making the one key of enemy comp equal to the one key of the J team ID entry into the int dict dictionary. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that means that what basically all I'm doing is dropping it down one level of the hierarchy into a completely different dictionary. Why is this useful? Um, for me, this is useful because later on, I want to make sure that there are no conflicts between my enemy composition and itself, or the enemy composition and the player's composition, the, the characters that the player has chosen during this draft. So in order to do that, there's a cool sort of command here, which is any dictionary at all. And you can do either it contains key or it contains value. So I'm in this case, it would be doing contains value because all my keys are basically identical, right? Well, between compositions, they're identical. So it would have to be contains value put in parentheses, whichever value in this case has to be a string, right? Um, whichever value it was. So we could be saying in this case, Ragnaros and that this would then check to see if the string Ragnaros existed with an enemy comp. Now, if I did that on all comps dict, of course, because it has so many compositions, it would always come up true, right? Whereas in this much, much smaller subset that I'm creating here, if it is present, then we know that it is present and relevant. So that's something that you can do to work with these guys. And then of course, a question remains here that could we do this with all comps dict and putting in all of these variables that we've got, which would be uh, J team ID. And then after that, even we've got our own key of one dot contains value. And this is why you're seeing that I wanted to do that because once we start putting on these additional requirements. Um, it makes it very difficult to go in and check those particular things. You could do it on the higher levels. So we can do it on the original JTM ID. But that's because JTM ID contains a value and that value is one and then it's string. I suppose so does the other side. So I'm not quite sure why it simply doesn't like going so deep. simply doesn't like going so deep, but making this conversion allowed that to happen. So nonetheless, this was basically the simplest way for me to figure out how to import and utilize my JSON information in my C-sharp script um, as a newbie programmer. I'm crazy new to this stuff. This is probably the end of my first month. 
And uh, that took a long time to figure out. So if you're in my boat, you're welcome. <laughs> um, it took me a long time to figure out, and hopefully uh, this is useful to some of you. Um, either way, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit like, and uh, I'll be sure to keep you updated on some of the newer challenges that I've got and how I've figured out the solution in order to uh, manage whatever it might be. Uh, once I figure out those arrays, maybe we'll put up a little something about that to how to build and work with an array and, and maybe a list and who knows what else is in there. I've got plenty of stuff yet to learn. That's for darn sure. Um, nonetheless, I hope you enjoy this. Hope it, it helped you. Um, if you haven't already, I definitely want to recommend this. Um, the IDE that I'm using here is actually Visual Studio. It is Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. And that means it's free for home users. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't already. Um, nonetheless, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.